just because they're roast potatoes doesn't mean they have to go on a roast dinner. I'm gonna have these with some sausage and gravy. Some sausages and some gravy and some veg. Look how crispy they look. Let's just get one to represent, to represent. See, like glass. Howdy. Well, I was a bit loud, sorry. Howdy. So, uh, it's coming out of Christmas. And as far as I'm concerned, the centerpiece of a Christmas dinner is the roast potatoes. Centerpiece of any roast dinner. If you don't have good roast potatoes, people are gonna say, mm, it's all right, but these roast potatoes weren't great. Decent roast potatoes can make up for a, a lot of poor quality other things. And to be fair, I'd quite happily just have a roast dinner that's just roast potatoes and the veg, maybe a bit of stuffing and no meat. I'm having these roast potatoes later, I'm gonna have them with just some sausages and a bit of gravy. It's gonna be lovely. Now, choice of potato. Any potato will turn into a half decent roast potato if you do it right. If you want a really, really good roast potato, King Edwards or Maris Pipers are gonna be your best bet. But these are just generic roast, you no, know, um, baking potatoes, like from a supermarket, the ones that you'd have as a jacket potato. But I fancy roast potatoes, so we're gonna make them roast potatoes. They've been in the cupboard a little while, so they've started to sprout. That's not a big deal. Um, ugly spuds need love too. Just peel those bits away. I mean, we're gonna peel the whole potato, but get rid of all of them. Get yourself one of these wire speed peelers. They're so much easier than trying to do it with a knife, and you also end up with a lot more, well, a lot less waste. So I'm just gonna go around peeling them all. Now, the skin on a potato, I will quite often leave on if I'm making chips or if I'm making wedges. But with a roast potato, you're never gonna really get that super crisp, chunky, not chunky, super crisp, crunchy exterior. So I've got a saucepan here with some water in it. I'm just gonna, once I've peeled them, chuck them in there so they don't start to go um, brown. And also, we're gonna cut them up as well, but you wanna get rid of the starch on the surface, much like when you're making a potato, I'll speak today. Much like when you're making chips, that starch on the surface isn't gonna help you get them crispy. And just go around, peeling them all, waste as little as possible. Might wanna just peel away any dents. Uh, not dents, you know, like your little black spots and the eyes, they call them, and things like that. Bits like that, just peel them away. As much for um, cosmetic reasons as anything. Right. So if your potatoes are a bit fresher than mine and they're, the skins aren't a bit manky, you don't have to throw these away. If you toss all this in a bit of oil, stick it in a hot oven, you can make sort of like crispy potato skins. Those skins are a bit on the manky side, so I'm gonna forego that with them. I'm just gonna compost them. Now, there's two schools of thought when it comes to a roast potato. Some people like them big, so you've got loads of potato there, so there's loads of fluffy interior and the nice crispy, exterior my mentality though is the larger the surface area the more crispness why well, we eat crinkle cut chips so out of a decent sized potato like that i'll get three this one i'm going to tend to do what i tend to do is take a third off of one end and then split the other third in half And especially if you've got a potato that's got a smaller end, I'll take the smaller end off and then just wallop through that. So now I'm gonna put them back in that water, give them a little bit of a swish. You see the water goes cloudy because that's that starch that we wanna get rid of off of the surface. So we're gonna drain that third load of water away and then we're gonna fill it back up. Just need to cover the potatoes. You don't need a massive pot of water for this. Helps if you lay the potatoes down. As long as they're covered, we're good. Now, I think I've said this before, anything that grows under the ground, start in cold water. All right, if you've got your um, really thinly sliced potato, or if you've got um, really thinly sliced carrots, things like that, get away with just blanching them. But if you're cooking full size carrots, potatoes, start in cold water, decent pinch of salt, and start seasoning at the very beginning. Whack that up to as high a heat as you got, and it's gonna slowly take its time to come up to the boil, but because it's gonna slowly come up to temperature, you're gonna get a much even cooking. Now, 
That's gonna probably take 10 minutes to even come to a boil, and then we're gonna boil them for about another 10 minutes. Obviously that's gonna change, you've got a massive pot with loads of potatoes in it. It's gonna take a lot longer to heat up, and you're gonna um, have to boil them for a bit longer. But once it's at a boil, all of those potatoes in that water are gonna be at the same temperature. So once it comes to a boil, it shouldn't take much longer, but we'll come back in about 10, no, about 15, 20 minutes, and I'll show you where you want to get them to. You want to, not quite to the point where you can start making mash out of them, but you do want to boil them for a little bit longer than you think. And we'll find out why when we come back in about 20 minutes. Right, and um, we're back about 20, 25 minutes. It's a little bit longer to come up to temperature. So get yourself a knife. Once you can get the knife and just next to no pressure, just all the way through the potato and it drops back off again. That's about where you want it. Now don't go too much further than that. It's better to have overcooked them a little bit at this point than undercooked them. So now the next step is to drain them. Get yourself a colander or a... If you have some that break up, it's not the end of the world. The littler ones probably would have cooked a bit more than the bigger ones, obviously. Now, now we just leave them. At least 20 minutes, 30 minutes, just to um, steam them dry. You see all the steam coming, that's moisture. We want all of that off of these potatoes. Try and spread them out a bit so that there's not one underneath that's keeping, getting a load of steam trapped in it, on it. This point, you can leave them as long as you want, really. Like, if I'm cooking a big roast dinner, when I get up in the morning when I'm prepping the whatever meat we're having and then getting that ready to start roasting, that's when I'll do the potatoes. And I'll just leave them like that. That way, you've got them all boiled. When it comes to cooking a roast dinner, it frees up some half space so you can get carrots and gravy or whatever else going a lot earlier. And they're done. Right, so now what we're going to do, while they're steam drying, get my oven up to two... 20 fan power vegetable oil um i i always have vegetable oil on hand because it's neutral flavor cheap does all the work you want any oil to do um any other high smoke point oils to do so sunflower oil peanut oil grapeseed oil rapeseed oil any of those in the pan you want quite a lot that's going in that oven so that oil gets nice and hot and preheated so that when we come back in 20 minutes to put the potatoes in, it's all ripping hot and like, we're roasting them, but essentially we're frying them in the oven. So we're back in about 20 minutes and we'll bosh them in the oven. Okay. Ooh. 20 minutes later, our uh, potatoes have dried off. Oil in the oven is now gonna be ripping hot, so be careful, we need to get that out. Now, secret, which I don't think is a secret, because I think everyone knows this these days. Give them a shake. Don't go absolutely nuts. But you want to get them like this, all fluffy up and around the edges. And they should sizzle as soon as they go in. Because that these fluffy edges, oh Jesus, could have hurt itself then, are gonna go super nice and crispy. So Make yourself a bit easier if you get yourself a decent spoon because what we're gonna need to do as well, give them a bit of space in the pan, but it don't matter too much if they are a little um, bunched up. And I like to get the biggest flat surface lying down as well to begin with, but that's just the way I do it. It's not super necessary. Right now, carefully, really carefully, grab the, base, uh, the baking tray and just tilt it so the oil pulls to the one side and just get that oil, just baste it over your potatoes. But do be really careful. Um, I should probably say, really, you should probably tilt it away from yourself. So if the oil does, something does go wrong, the oil goes all over the kitchen counter and the hob, and it's just a pain in the ass to clear up. Instead of getting 220 degree scalding hot oil all over your feet. Now essentially, you just whack these in the oven. Give them some time. Probably gonna be about 40 minutes. Keep an eye on them. They're pretty much cooked through. You could eat them now if you wanted. They're boiled potatoes. So once they're crispy, they're done. You haven't got to worry about them cooking through. So keep an eye on them. Once they're at the level of crispiness you like, some people will like them almost charred. Some people will like them just a light golden brown. That's up to you. I'll be back in a bit and uh, we can have a butcher's. Right, and we're back. Might be a bit smoky. It's gonna be very hot, so be very careful. Oh, they're looking good. Right, so I've already had these out and given them a baste. Give them on a baste. Time to give them a flip. So be very careful, don't splash yourself with oil, but just maybe get some tongs if you're worried. Good. 
look how crispy they look. So remember what I was saying about your preference. A lot of people would like these right now as they are. I gonna let them go for about another 10 minutes just to get that other side a little bit crispy. And I'm just gonna give them a little baste. Be very careful. Don't splash yourself with super hot oil. And away they go for another, I'm only gonna give them about another 10 minutes to be fair. Minutes later. Just gonna get them out into a bowl. If you want, you can chuck them on some um, kitchen towel, kitchen roll, some paper, whatever you call it, to drain off some of that oil. Completely up to you. But what I do like to do at this point, while they're still hot, Give it a decent hit of salt. And there you go. Proper roast potatoes. I like them, like I said, they're not quite burnt, but they're getting on their way to a bit of char. I like them like that because they are ridiculously, ridiculously crunchy. Let's just get one to represent. To represent. See, like glass. Super lovely and fluffy inside. Super, super crunchy on the outside. If you wanted them a little bit less well done and a little bit crispy around the edges, take them out 10, 15, maybe even 20 minutes earlier than that. And like I said, these weren't super fancy potatoes. These are just normal baking potatoes. But there you go, in time for Christmas, time for you to get some practice in with a couple of roast dinners. Just because they're roast potatoes doesn't mean they have to go on a roast dinner. I'm gonna have these with some sausage and gravy, some sausages and some gravy and some veg. They're nice on their own. Make a bowl of these and get some things to dip it in and no one's gonna complain. Takes a bit of time, not much effort, mostly technique. They're not particularly effort because you've got to, you're essentially frying them. But like I said, that's ripping hot, be careful, don't burn yourself and don't. When you're basting on the hob like this, tilt it away from you so that if it spills, it goes onto your hob. It's a pain in the ass to clear up, but you're not gonna burn your feet. Don't do like what I was doing when I was tilting it towards myself. I'm a twat. But yeah, cool, bosh. And uh, I'll see you when I see you. Hey. Oh yeah, like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification, follow me on Instagram. Uh, I'm not going to bother putting the ingredients in the description for this because the ingredients are potatoes, salt and oil. But yeah, bye.